Last time I showed you some interesting spots pro teams were warding. Today we're going to do an updated version of that and I'm also going to tell you where almost all pro teams are warding at different stages of the game. This spot is similar to one I showed you last time, but in the last video I made it a point to break some of the surrounding trees. Well, Crit showed me that you can actually get a lot of value from this spot without breaking any trees. If you place it more to the south, you can see more of the lane and still sliver of the jungle to briefly scout any rotations, if you have a keen eye. If you place the ward more to the north, it offers similar value, just flipped. More vision of the jungle while seeing a sliver of the lane. Now let's look at some interesting ward spots that are around the high ground, to help your siege or defense. Kyori from PSG Quest placed this ward which I thought was pretty cool. It's near the Dyer's high ground bottom and has some slight variations depending on what you need. If you're pushing, you might want to place it more to the north as this will offer more vision of the high ground, allowing you to see opportunities where the enemy is out of position. If you're defending, placing it more to the south will allow you to see more of the lane. This is a great spot to ward if you're defending and the enemy has a gem, since they won't be able to see the ward from the lower elevation of the lane. Kyori again shows us this ward spot near the radiant bottom high ground. This spot offers similar value, being able to see some of the high ground as well as the lane, although there isn't much variation with this one, and I think it's actually more popular nowadays so it's probably more likely to get dewarded. This ward from Puppy offers a lot of value but requires some lumberjack work. In this case he's playing Nature's Prophet so it's a lot easier. If you can break a lot of trees or see that they're already broken, this ward can be great to scout the enemy backlines if they're pushing, or just to see anyone moving out of the Radiant base from the lane or the Tormentor path. Just remember that trees respawn after 3 minutes so if you break a bunch of trees and think you have so much awesome vision, well in 3 minutes your awesome vision will likely get reduced, but trees directly around the ward you place won't respawn until the ward is dead. One spot that I wanted to briefly mention that I didn't notice any pros using is just outside this defender's gate to the south of the Radiant Tormentor. It could be great when pushing as it offers a lot of vision of the high ground. Seeing a support walk over here, then walk away, might be a dead giveaway that they just warded. But the thing is, since it offers so much high ground vision, going to deward it will likely put you in a vulnerable spot. So you can kind of place it here, knowing the enemy knows it's there, then just be ready to punish them if they decide to make a move on it. From all the pro games I watched, I noticed that in the first 0 to 15 or 20 minutes, teams prefer to place wards in these areas, around mid to see runes and in the jungles to see rotations and people farming. From then on, they heavily prioritize lane wards, presumably to scout heroes rotating around a farm so they can move to pick them off easily. And of course, there are the typical wards on cliffs during teamfights or wards to prepare for Roche, which we'll touch on later. White Mon from Tundra places a ward here, above the Radiant Lotus Pool to the right of the bottom lane. This is kind of similar to this spot, which we covered in the last warning video, but this one is easier to get to if you're Radiant, and still allows you to see some movement in the lane as well as the path to the right. Kitrak from Shopify Rebellion mirrors White Mon's ward with this very similar ward spot near the Dyer's Lotus Pool. This offers lots of vision of the lane, but not as much of the side path like White Mon's ward did. Team Spirit supports like this simple ward across the river from the Radiant Seeker Shop. It sees a bit of the lane, the stairs leading into the dire jungle, and really cool, it actually sees a sliver of the high ground near the secret shop. And if you can break this tree above, it can give great vision of you clicking the subscribe button, which guarantees you'll win your next game. This ward from Aposhka can be a great offensive or defensive ward. It sees a good amount of the jungle, likely able to scout anyone rotating through it, and a bit of the stairs to the right. Additionally, the more trees you can break, the better as you'll be able to see heroes moving through the lane. I thought this word from Fishman on Entity was cool because you might think, why not just place it on the cliff right next to it? Well, it offers a bit of a different value and is likely to be harder and more time consuming to deward. Yeah, if somebody places a sentry on this cliff, this ward will be in range of it, but it won't instantly reveal it like if it was on the cliff. They'll either have to have their own ward on the cliff or spend the time walking here to check. This ward can see a bit of the top of the stairs that lead into the river, which can be nice to see if anyone is about to move in for the rune, or to make sure the immediate area is safe if you're moving up the stairs. It also still provides some vision to the right to see if anyone is moving around this large camp. And even better, if you can break this tree, this ward will give great vision around these stairs as well. I like this ward a lot from Tian Ming, the position 5 on Azure Ray, and I'm surprised I haven't seen more people using it. It's one that I personally like using. It's at the top of these lower stairs near the Dire Secret Shop, and is able to see people rotating through the Secret Shop, which is a common path, as well as moving through the river. It can even see a bit to the right, maybe allowing you to see some heroes moving around the Tier 1 tower. Now let's talk about Roche wards. For Dire, there are a lot of options. It's very common for a team to place two wards and prep for a Roche skirmish. One around the Lotus Pool, sometimes even right inside of it, and another more to the right of the lane. There are a lot of variations to both of these wards, but they all give really good vision of anyone approaching the Roche area, allowing you to make a move on them before they expect it. 
As for Radiant Roche Wards, I didn't notice much variation. The most common one I've seen is the Classic Ward near the Twin Gate. There are some spots like to the south, closer to the outpost, at the top of these stairs by the Watcher, or further out in the lane to see the enemies before they arrive. But the most common wards that I see are near the Twin Gates. And lastly, I want to share a ward spot that I like using, but I don't really see other people using it. Here. It might look weird, but let me explain. It gives you vision along four common paths people will take in this area, and most importantly, it's not very likely to get dewarded. If the enemy suspects that you've warded somewhere in the lane, they'll probably check deeper in the lane, and if they check the cliff to the right, a sentry up there won't have the range to see this ward. Try it out and let me know what you think of it. Also, if you know of any cool ward spots that I haven't mentioned, be sure to let all of us know in the comments, if you're willing to reveal your secrets. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.